I feel silly. <laughs> it's gonna be the one of those episodes. <clears throat> you are now tuned in to the motherfucking Ambition Hour podcast on Worth the Wait Radio. You ready? Dub T motherfucking dub ho. Yo, and welcome to the Ambition Hour podcast. It's your girl Claudia Renee on your airwaves, and this is episode 108. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> how is everybody doing? Um, as you can tell, I'm a little excited. Um, but welcome, everybody, to episode 108 of the Ambition Hour podcast. Super excited. Um, let's go ahead and get started with the shit. Um, I'm very grateful this week for... Lord Jesus. You know, one of the things about um, this whole grateful thing that I came up with is that you got to come up with something new every single week. And I've been doing this for quite some time. So I'm grateful for a lot of things. One of the things that I am grateful for is my male friends. Okay. So I'm very grateful for my male friends because they have always given me insight on a lot of things. Um, And it also shows me like just what guys go through and what they have to like deal with as far as it goes with women and the ones who let me in on like, you know, certain aspects of their life and are comfortable with me. I just appreciate that so much because in a world where it's it's like they're they want men to succeed, but at the same time, they don't want men to be comfortable and they don't want men um, to really succeed. I just, um, I'm just grateful for my, my male friends, um, because all of them are just so driven and they don't allow anything that is holding them back, um, to hold them back. Um, also it's a lot of fun, um, you know, to be able to have a platonic relationship with a a man and, you know, one that's not always trying to fuck you. It's a lot of fun. (laughs) It's a lot of fun when a dude's not trying to always fuck you, you know, and, um, there's always a a misconception when it comes to that. Um, people are like, oh, well, they're hanging out or they're doing this or whatever. And it's just like, they're fucking. And then that's just because there's some girls who are doing that. So that's why there's a misconception with that. But yeah, so shout out to all all my homeboys. I fuck with y'all heavy. I appreciate you guys. You're always showing me love. Um, and yeah, so I'm just very grateful for y'all. Um, this week, actually today we're, um, recording the episode on Thursday, which is 2-20-2028. That's kind of crazy. Episode 108 on 2-20-20-20. That's a lot of 20s. Um, and it's Rihanna's birthday. So happy birthday to the goat. (laughs) Full faces of Fenty. Everything on my face is Fenty. Well, Except for two things, two exceptions, but everything else is, is Fenty. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to say happy birthday to her because uh, she has been um, making music since I was in high school. And so I just feel like I've grown up with her. Um, I realized today that she's only two a year older than me. I feel like I've always known that, but I guess now that I'm older, I kind of realize it a little bit more. Um, Rihanna has done a lot for... Um, for just music in general, uh, she's also taught um, us women um, how to be on, more entrepreneurial. And, you know, you don't have to just be a singer or you don't just have to be a dancer or whatever. You can ha- be a dancer. You can be a singer. You can also have your own makeup brand, your own fashion brand. Um, you can uh, push the limits on what a fashion show is. And uh, she's just all about inclusion and all of, just like she's just She's just so amazing. She's actually who I wanted to honor for Black History Month. So shout out to Rihanna. Um, this is not the last week of Black History Month, but we're getting there. Um, so I have Rihanna. I'll probably have somebody else by the end of the episode just because, like I said last week, I wanted I want to um, honor a little bit more just because uh, February is a shorter month, even though we get more Saturdays. <laughs> I, I low-key noticed that i was just like we've had a couple of saturdays for a short month and this month is is, is c- technically over but oh and then the episode is dropping on 222 guys 222 is a number that i see all the time like on my phone the time what's funny is that when i want to catch it i don't catch it but when i'm supposed to catch it i catch it but 222 is like one of my favorite numbers and i always um wrap the part um 222 <laughs> That's that raw shit. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you need to listen to Mr. Ross's discography, which reminds me, um, him and D. Wade and Udonis has them. Are y'all dropping a song? <laughs> it should be already out. So make sure that you check that out. I don't have an opinion about it because I haven't heard it. I'm just excited because 
I'm a Miami girl. I fuck with Ross. Love Ross. Fuck with D, um, D Wade. Udonis Haslam was um, has the same birthday as me, so and he's obviously you know they play for the Heat, so and then they are making a song with a Miami rapper. I just think that's pretty cool, you know. Um, Dame, I didn't even have talking about the All Star <laughs> of the All Star weekend on the roster to talk about. Well, I'm gonna talk about it really quickly because I do have other things that I want to get to. So the All Star weekend was this past weekend, the weekend before this one, and I got to actually watch it and enjoy it. Normally, like I, I always say, I'm gonna watch it, I'm gonna watch it, and then I always forget to watch it or something happens and. You know, um, I, I end up not watching it. But this week, this week, I was able to catch it every single time. We talked about the the new um, point system that they had come up with. I found out that Chris Paul was the one who kind of, like, gave the NBA that idea. For those of you that didn't know, um, they named the MVP award the Kobe Bryant Award. So that's pretty cool. Was it, the M- it is the MVP award, right? Yeah. Um, they named him that. Um, one of the things that I really liked was all of the microphones. They had 224 on them. That was pretty dope. Um, you know, it was just cool to see. Oh, and then like seeing Allen Iverson, like he was the only person in a Kobe Laker jersey at that game. And I saw I I didn't even see him up close, but I remember telling Hob, I'm like, yo, that's Iverson. (laughs) And I was just super excited that he was he was there. Um, I later saw a video of him and D-Way just embracing each other. And that was pretty dope. Um, and heartwarming. Uh, Another thing is common one MVP for the celebrity basketball game. Um, he also judged the dunk contest. He also, um, he rapped everybody's, like, intro to the, to, to like, <laughs> I'll just put his hat over his face. Listen, y'all not gonna bash my man like that. He was working all weekend. I didn't get to spend Valentine's Day with him because he was with y'all. And so, you know, there's that. No, but on all seriousness, it was, <laughs> it was a pretty cool weekend. Um, Dame Lillard performed. Um, which I thought was pretty cool because it's like he's an NBA player. He got to perform, and then he brought Lil Wayne out because he does have a song with Lil Wayne. He brought Jeremiah out. Um, I know that Chance the Rapper performed, but I don't listen to Chance. And I felt like he was just screaming. I don't know. Is that how he performs, Hav? You've seen him perform, right? Chance? Is that how he, like, screams? No? He was He was definitely screaming. Um, one of the things that I noticed was that in the three point contest was that they would do um, on the count of three and then they would have like the girl count down like three, two, one. And then they would do go like by the. Con- OK, so for those that don't know the on the count of three, that's um, Kanye says that and then go is um, common. So I thought that was really cool. Um, Hip hop and the NBA and well, basketball in general have always been connected um, in some way, shape, or form. Because every um, baller want to be a rapper and every rapper want to be a baller. So it makes sense that the two words collide that way. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was pretty dope. So every single time that somebody like had to go to each round and the... I don't know about the other ones because I didn't see everything like that. But I did catch the games. You know, I caught everything. <laughs> um so yeah so the all-star uh, all-star weekend was um pretty dope all right let's go let's go to my notes um okay so i did want to shout out our sponsor shout out to his and hers um hair studio mia that is their instagram um and i'm really excited because i finally made my appointment to go get my haircut because i just need to get these tips um in order so i need ashley to go give my hair some tender love and care as you should um and to make an appointment i made my appointment i went on her instagram guys so easy i went on her instagram clicked the link in the bio and literally made my appointment right then and there so yeah all you have to do is head on over to glamgodmiami.glossgenius.com that way you can go ahead and make your appointment um you can also get your hair cut fellas you can get your hair cut there as well again their instagram is his and hers hair studio mia before i continue i did want to send a really big shout out to the nwo podcast who is dropping their 100th episode this week i don't know when (laughs) because it hasn't dropped yet um but i'm just very happy um when i know how it feels to drop 100 episodes and the feeling that you feel once you're done and it's like out there and you're like shit i've been doing this for 100 weeks and just like (laughs) the passion and the the sacrifices and 
um, the content that you just have to come up with and the topics and everything. And I just I just want to say congratulations to the NWO podcast. Can we get a round of applause, please, for the NWO podcast? Yes, yes, yes. I think I'm going to end with that. Okay. So as I was saying, um, me and my sister have been doing this thing where we, it's like a, a music challenge. So every single day of the month, we have been sending each other songs. I mean, every single day of the month, we have been sending each other a song. And it's basically for each day, there is something that has to do with the song. Like one of them is like your wedding song, which is kind of tricky because you can say like, this is going to be my wedding song. But then like, I feel like your wedding song should be the song that like you and your man or your girl kind of pick. And it's like a special moment that, oh, this is our song, you know, so it's kind of difficult to pick a wedding song when you don't know i picked me santa by romeo santos which is like every time that i hear that song i always say that that's my wedding song because i always think that i've always liked the idea of the first dance that i guess like the couple dances is bachata because bachata is such a beautiful dance and i just feel like it live livens up the mood but like i said i can't pick that because what if my husband doesn't feel that way <laughs> <laughs> like it just it just won't work so yeah um uh, i totally got sidetracked but it's because this is something i really wanted to share because i found out how mighty sunshine shout out to mighty sunshine i found out how her and her husband um got their wedding song and i thought it was such a beautiful story so i'm like oh wow like you really can't pick the song you know um but yeah so one of them was a song from like your from the night i think i should okay i did share the stories of like one of your of your preteens and I shared how it was What's Your Fantasy and how I knew the lyrics to that song or whatnot. But Heartbreaker by Mariah Carey is a song that I listened to in my preteens. I, I've i talked about this, huh, huh? I feel like I have, but I don't think I've talked about this particular part. So if you listen to the podcast, then you know that Heartbreaker is like, um, I remember, like, I had the album. I list, I, like, it was one of my favorite things ever, but it was one of the, one of my first introductions to Jay-Z. And did I mention that as well? <laughs> I ain't shit. <laughs> I guess it's because I just heard it. And I just told her the story about how, like, I list literally, because it was, like, that song and Big Pimpin' that were out around the same time. So I remember hearing him on Heartbreaker and then wanting to learn all the lyrics and then, and then, um like, listening to Big Pimpin' and then, like, eventually, like, just digging into the rest of his music and, all that stuff. I guess I just wanted to talk about Jay Z, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Your person to honor? <laughs> oh man, Jay Z is a really good person to honor um, for Black History Month. Um, honestly, if it wasn't for Jay Z, we wouldn't have Rihanna. So there's that. Yeah, for sure. We wouldn't have Rihanna because Jay Z was the one who basically discovered her, had her a part of Def Jam, and you know was basically a part of the signing deal. He is the one who introduced her to the world. Um, and he, she is still part of that, like that she's part of the rock nation lineage, um, which we've actually talked, we talked about that a long time ago. I don't even know what episode that was, but we basically showed like the Rockefeller lineage and it was, um, it's Biggs, uh, dame dash and then J and then jay and so it's like basically everybody and everything that stemmed from these three geniuses and you know like we got kanye from that we got like how i said rihanna um they have a sports management thing like it's just so much um and I think that it's pretty it's pretty dope. So, yeah, so Jay-Z, obviously, like, I talk about him all the time. He's one of my favorite rappers. And um, I just love how he has aged. Like, I feel like he has aged. He just turned 50 this past year. And the way that he just aged is just so gracefully. And a lot of... Um, a lot of artists, I feel, I think um, Russ was saying this on Twitter earlier today about how he, um, he uses Jay-Z as like a blueprint of what he wants his career to look like. And hello, he has he has the generational wealth that a lot of us are striving for. He has the multiple, um, you know, what is it? The multiple streams of income. He's working with one of the biggest organizations in the world. Like he's working with the NFL, like to have somebody like a hip hop, somebody who came from hip hop be that hands-on when it comes to things that have to do with the nfl i just think that that's amazing 
And so shout out to Jay Z. Um, I think I'm gonna because uh, I really wanted to honor like Ari. So sh- okay, so I'm gonna do really quick shout outs. So shout out to Ari Lennox, um, Summer Walker, and SZA. The reason why I am honoring you three ladies this this episode and not next week is because man, I've been hearing y'all music. Well, I was at Snow Snow Allegra is part of that combination, but she's not black. <laughs> so she can't but i've just been listening to these the, these women like non-stop the past couple of days and i just appreciate their music and their vulnerability and how their music makes me feel and just the feeling that i get just hearing their voices like and like i like oh man oh man like so shout out to those queens i know that a lot of them uh, uh, all three of them suffer from anxiety and have suffered from depression and um get pretty awkward like around you know audiences and stuff like that and I just always pray for them because I want to keep hearing music from them you know um I want to keep hearing music from them I don't really pay attention to what they say so much on social media because I know a lot of the times we say things on social media and we don't mean it or it's in the heat of the moment for some of us women it's it's our period that is just bringing all of these emotions up and we, you know, we just, we feel like we can't really talk to anybody about it. So we go on social media and talk about it to everybody. It's weird. I know, but just bear with us. It happens. So when I see and what, um, when I see what they're saying, it's just like, I don't even care. Like, just keep making music, please. Like, I hate when they're like, I'm not going to make music anymore. Like, no, 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 no. What you need to do is just stop talking your shit sometimes and just make music. (laughs) Or, like, you know, do something that's going to make it better and take the necessary steps to make it better. So those ladies are getting a shout-out because, like I said, I've been listening to them nonstop for the past couple of days. Which brings me into the main topic that I wanted to talk about this week. I know it's a little bit of a downer, but I think that I can kind of switch it up. This was this was a topic that was brought to me um, by one of the listeners, and it's basically about depression as an adult. <clears throat> so... I felt like I touched on it in a couple episodes ago, but I wanted to get way more in depth with it to, um, now, especially because I feel like um, 2020, a lot of things have been happening, especially um, this past week. We actually just lost um, Pop Smoke. Um, he was murdered in his home, like in L.A. And, you know, like you just don't know what's going to happen You know, this was something that happened within the culture and like everybody just like, you know, like one of my initial things was just like I hit up the group chat. I let them know. But then after the fact, like I just let them know, like, I'm just so grateful and have so much love for you guys because like you just don't know. Like a lot of the times we take life for granted and we don't know what you know, when is going to be our last day or when's the last time we're going to see somebody, you know, we've lost, we had a really big loss in, in January at the end of January. Then we get this loss. Now this, this guy was only 20 years old. Like when back that ass up dropped, he was born like that year. Like that's crazy. He was only 20 years old. And for him to have been murdered and shot the way that that happened it's just like man my heart just goes so much to you know men who 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 fear that they won't make it to 21 and who um who like they know because man it's it's really sad to know to 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 even know this but especially like in the black and the latin community like some of these men they don't even expect to live till they're 25 you know and then to see somebody um, pass away at 20 years old it's just it's just very sad so um the topic of, of depression comes because you know you start to think about life what have you done what have you accomplished you know and then you start to become hard on yourself and then you start to think like man I'm really a failure because you know he was 20 when he passed away but look at he accomplished a lot in like the short I remember hearing about him on a podcast and then, like, within months, this dude blew the fuck up. Like, within, like not even within, like, it was like this. And I don't know if it was because, like, since I heard about him, I saw him more. But, man, I know that, like, at one point, like, I heard his song as, like, a sleeper. 
And then I heard his shit like everywhere, like after like a couple of weeks. And <clears throat> and so it's just like it, it's just like you just don't know. So then when you look at your life, you're just like, man, I don't even have that type of money that this dude had. Or I don't even have people around me like that and like all of this stuff. So like I said, the topic of, of depression comes up up and as an adult. So one of the things is the pains of being an adult. So as an adult, one of, what are the things that as an adult you have to deal with? You have to deal with taxes. That's number one. Got to deal with taxes. You have to deal with um, your parents getting older. So that's those. And I'm not saying that, that doing your taxes and stuff is depressing, but this is what comes with being an adult. Because um, sometimes what happens with taxes is that people compare their refunds. Po- pocket watching. Pocket watching. <laughs> mind your business <laughs> just mind your business um and um parents getting older oh my god that's something that it doesn't depress me but it definitely it's something that comes with being an adult you know also um losing friends you know drifting away from friends you know friends that you thought you were go- always going to have for the rest of your life you're losing them as an adult because they either get married they have kids they move away because a lot of the times, you know, like after some, t- like after some time, people decide like I'm just gonna up and leave. You lose all communication with them, and it's just you start blaming yourself. Um, and then a lot of the times, you there's times where it's somebody that you needed to forgive, and you didn't get a chance to forgive, or vice versa. So then you feel like that emptiness within you, and. And yeah, so like it's just there's just so many variables when it comes to adulthood. And I feel like a lot of the times uh, the trauma that we experience as kids um, doesn't really come out until we're adults when we're really trying to figure out what's really wrong with us. And a lot of the times when you haven't really healed from your trauma, you tend to um, hold it in. So you're holding it in you're um you're keeping the the feelings of your trauma from when you were a child or even as an adult because as an adult i feel like um we we don't we don't see certain things as for what they are so for example um which is actually a true story as an adult i got into a really bad accident um it was a burn burning accident so basically what happened was that my arm caught on fire. My arm and some of my hand, like part of my hand caught on fire. And then like this whole part of my arm, like right here, caught on fire as well. Now, um, I'm going to shout out DMX because I thought of stop, drop, and roll as soon as that, like as soon as I ca- like my arm caught on fire, like I just literally stopped, drop, and roll. And um and so so that's something that happened to me that was very um like it was it was trauma like i i was thinking about it this morning and not to get depressed but it was more along the lines of like holy shit like that really happened to me and i remember the feeling that i felt after the fact and just feeling like i felt dumb i felt um i felt like people were making fun of me I felt, um, I felt disconnected. Um, I remember going to the doctor and, um, like she had me fill out like a form and it was just basically along the lines of like how it was, it was a basically like a test to see how depressed you were because I was mentioning to her like how I had been feeling. So I remember getting the results back and it was basically like, girl, (laughs) you're depressed as fuck, you know? And it, 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 it got down to like her having to talk to me and then, you know, the whole talk about like, you know, with the therapist and things like that. So it's something that gets real, you know, depression is real. And when we're younger, we don't know that what we're going through and what we're experiencing is depression. So I want you guys to know and acknowledge what is depression. Um, I have this right here so it's basically like the symptoms of depression so this can be um i'm assuming the majority of the people who listen to the podcast are adults so yeah um so but not all of us know the symptoms of depression and we don't even know like sometimes we're we're like oh blame it on mercury retrograde it's just like no we will blame it on our signs no we blame it on whatever you can blame it on whatever you want at the end of the day home girl homeboy you might be depressed so the symptoms um feeling several of the following for at least two weeks is feeling sad anxious or empty man (laughs) 
I don't know. I just read that, and that just, like, brought back a couple memories. And I'm okay with talking about this on the podcast because – I've overcome it. I haven't had a depressed episode in a, I would say in like maybe two years, three years. There's times where like I'm tired or I don't feel like my full self, but I don't like the feeling sad, anxious or empty. Like, ah, man, if you're feeling that, I'm praying for you. Feeling hopeless or pessimistic, feeling guilty, worthless or helpless, not enjoying things you used to enjoy trouble with concentration memory or making decisions sleeping too much or too little appetite changes gaining or losing weight feeling restless or irritable thoughts of suicide or death now if you have any thoughts of suicide or death i would definitely recommend calling a hotline or speaking to somebody that you trust that is going to understand where you are coming from and um let you know that you are worth it and if you don't have somebody then you can hit my dms (laughs) you can hit my dms and you we could talk about it because um honestly like everybody deserves to live this beautiful life at its full potential so another thing um we've talked about this as well which is um going to therapy i mentioned last week how i started the u effect which is this program that dr kelsey ann um has like i said she i follow i saw her stuff on twitter followed her twitter i bought her bundle i just bought her ebook today and yeah because i'm trying to heal from childhood trauma i'm trying to heal from things that i don't understand right now as an adult but i know that they're affecting me in some type of way so um another thing that um was brought also to into this topic was just like friends drifting away so i mentioned how friends like they get married they have kids they move away so those are th- th- those are three things that end up happening, right? That can ha- can make a friendship as an adult drift away. But there's also like you just stop talking to one another, you know, or it's not the same as when you guys were younger because you know this person wants to go out drinking all the time and you're just not on that same tip because you have goals you want to make sure that you're accomplishing them and you're not going to accomplish them by going out every single weekend. So that can also cause depression because, you know, you're like, you're caught in between, you know, you feel, you feel um, like you can't be social or because you lost a friend, then you feel, you feel lonely or you feel um, like left out or even like um, you feel helpless because it's just like, damn, like I, I, I want to hang out with my friend, but they don't want to hang out with me because I don't want to go do this with them or or I want to hang out with my friends, but all they do is this. And sometimes we have that's why it's so important to set boundaries and also to have um, friends who are like minded. So something that can help you battle with the depression when it comes to losing friends or um like just getting older is kind of just like setting up boundaries once you set up boundaries man life is just so much more different there's so many things that change when you set boundaries um one of my favorite boundaries is if we are having a conversation and it turns into like um i don't want to say debate what would a different another word it's not a debate a discussion if we're having a discussion all right this is what i'm gonna share i'm gonna share this boundary with you because i don't know y'all motherfuckers stepping up to me um <laughs> so my the boundary that i have set is that if we are having a conversation that turns into a discussion where we are not agreeing with it once you decide that you're gonna raise your voice at me i am going to let you know hey if you continue to talk that loudly to me we are not going to continue speaking and that has actually helped me a lot <laughs> it's been working so i'm giving you guys that little gem um but that's why it's very important to set the boundaries because um a lot of the times what happens is when someone doesn't respect your boundaries or when you don't even know that you have any boundaries it triggers you it triggers you to feel sad anxious depressed and all of those things i remember there was a time in my life where i was depressed and had insomnia Whew. Lord. <laughs> that was tough and i was younger i was um i was i would say i was like in my early 20s when that happened to me i had nasty insomnia i was going to sleep like at six o'clock in the morning 
And then I was just so depressed. I remember I would sleep till like two o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know how I did that. And um, yeah, it's just it is it, just you just have to like be very mindful on what it is that you're feeding your mind too. Because one thing is being depressed, man, being depressed is normal. Like, it's so crazy how normal it is nowadays because you can tell somebody like, oh, I'm depressed. And it's almost like you're saying that you're sad or that you don't feel good or that you have a stomach ache. It's just like, hello, if somebody tells you that they're depressed, like you, <laughs> like, you can't just like take it as a grain of salt. Like, no, like being depressed is real shit. And as an adult, people don't care enough about it. So that's why it's always important to just seek professional help. Um, and, you know, find things that distract you. Something that I learned, um, in reading, uh, the, the, the workbook that I'm doing with Dr. Kelsey Ann is, um, is like, f uh, I can't remember shit. It's like, it's like the five, four, three, two, one method. And so it's like five things that I think you can see, um, four things that you can touch, three things that you can hear, two things that you can something, one thing that you can, it's like different things that you can do for when you get depressed or when you get triggered or when you like certain things because sometimes when you get depressed you're not yourself so then there's certain techniques that you can do that can kind of bring you back into who you are oh thank you I, I literally had it in my I could have checked it in my phone but thank you um so number so it's a it's a five things like how I was saying so before starting this exercise okay we're going to I'm going to do this for you guys I'm going to read it to you before starting this exercise pay attention to your breathing slow deep long breaths can help you maintain a sense of calm or help the return to a calmer state once you find your breath go through the following steps to help ground yourself number five acknowledge five things you see around you it could be a pen a spot on the ceiling anything in your surroundings number four acknowledge four things you can touch around you it can be your hair a pillow or the ground under your feet number three acknowledge three things you hear this could be an external sound. If you can hear your belly rumbling, that counts. Focus on things you can hear outside of your body. Number two, acknowledge two things you can smell. Maybe you are in your office and smell pencil, or maybe you are in your bedroom and smell a pillow. If you need to take a deep, uh, I'm sorry, if you need to take a brief walk to find a scent, you could smell soap in your bathroom or nature outside. Number one is acknowledge one thing you can taste. What does the inside of your mouth taste like? Gum, coffee, or the sandwich from lunch? This technique is one of many you could use if you're feeling anxious or overwhelmed. If it... Oh, there's a number that you can call. Should I give it? <laughs> um, yeah, if anxiety is something that you struggle with regularly and you continue to have trouble refocusing or coping with these feelings, please talk to your doctor or contact behavioral health partners at 585-276-6900. Yeah. And so um, that that's something that I learned as far as anxiety. So anxiety and depression are two different things. But I feel like when you are depressed, that's something that you can definitely use. I feel like that's something that's very helpful um, because, like I said, when you get depressed, you're just you're not yourself. So kind of to bring you back to ground. That's th those that five the five things that I just said right now, those five different exercises can just help you come back, you know, come back kind of because kind of realize and um you know just be grateful um that's something that i always say man when i feel depressed I, like i just start saying what i'm grateful for that's like my trick i say i i talk about what i'm grateful for like as much as i can like I, i've talked about how when i work out and you know i can't i feel like i can't keep going you know i start naming the things that i'm grateful for and that has has helped me it has helped me with my depression as well you know um before we started this podcast, I remember, man, there was a dark hole that I was in at one point. And the only thing that really helped me was being grateful. Me being grateful was what helped me literally climb out of that depressed hole that I was in. And me being grateful for what I had um, gave me the voice, huh? <laughs> and gave me the voice you know to do what it is that i'm doing today and so very grateful for that um shout out to soso who he was the one who brought up this topic um and i really liked it because i feel like this is just a topic that can't get discussed enough about because it's something that we all go through except we don't all talk about it 
you know and so if if me like sharing you know some of my instances with you guys can help you in any kind of way i'm more than happy to share because hello that's what i'm here for i've been doing this for like 108 episodes like sharing my life with you guys and um yeah i don't know everything i try to (laughs) i have to say that because i just yeah like because yeah yeah i'm just gonna say that that's just like a little disclaimer um, so this past weekend, um, for Valentine Valentine's Day weekend, get cute, they dropped the photograph, which is the movie with Issa Rae and Lakeith Stanfield. Great fucking movie. For somebody to get me to go to the movies, you have to be a, either a really good actor or really fuck with you, or the or the trailer got me. For Issa Rae, it was all three. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michael B. Jordan, like he mm, listen. I went to go watch Creed 1 and 2 at the movie theater. <laughs> I haven't seen the other ones. And maybe it's because he's in, like, cl- in clothes. <laughs> Whatever. Y'all know that I like Michael B. Jordan. Um. Okay, so the photograph. So, yeah, so the, <laughs> so the photograph. We, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I done had a moment. <laughs> I just got hot and everything. Oh, man. Um... It's funny, I went on live before this, and I had a lot of fun, and I want to say that I'm going to go on live more, but I don't want to lie, but I'm, hey, but I do use this as an accountability partner, so maybe now I will be going on live. Shout out to everybody who's on the live, gang, gang. Um, Okay, so it just had me hyped, so I'm super, I, that's why I started off really hyped this episode, Um, and also because I'm just super blessed to be doing this for 108 episodes, so yeah. Um, yeah. Day 108 episodes, bitch. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, you, <laughs> um, okay, so the photograph was a really good movie. One of my favorite things that I liked about the movie was the music, of course. But another thing that I really enjoyed was um, something that the director did, or I'm not sure who was in charge of this, but something that it w- would happen throughout the movie was the song would be playing normal in the movie like you know how they play songs in the backgrounds of the movies and stuff and then it would be like it was in the in the in the um the actor's car like blasting and then like you just hear them turn it off i fucking love that because it went from like it being played like normal and then like it'll be like you hear it like as if you were in the car and like just that whole transition and the scenes i just thought was so so cool i pay attention to little things like that and i really fucked with that um Issa ray was awesome uh one of the things that we we did talk about was like the whole little awkward moments that there was and i at first was giving the excuse of like Issa ray has made an entire career out of being awkward um but now and so i was kind of like excusing that but man like i really like that because there's sometimes when you're like you know when you're when you're vibing with somebody you don't gotta say much (laughs) you don't gotta say much you can just look at each other and be like all right you know whatever (laughs) like whatever you guys are looking at each other for or whatever that because sometimes within the silence there's a million words you know so i really enjoyed that i love the storyline i not i'm not even gonna lie to y'all i cried multiple times (laughs) throughout that movie so it was a really good movie so make sure that you go ahead and check it out um anything Issa ray really like i just said is is amazing um something that i do know about her is that she's um she's always wanted to like you know she's been inspired by like movies that um are like about love you know because i can only imagine um being a a black woman oh man she's another one i think this whole episode i'm just gonna honor random (laughs) like like random people like throughout the episode um because man (sighs) Black people are so talented, man. <laughs> so fucking talented. And they break so many barriers. Like, if it wasn't for some of the barriers that black people have, like, just, like, killed, like, it would be so hard for, like, women and, oh, like, even Latinas and Latinos to just, like, get into, you know, just the doors. You know, it, it would, man, yeah, man who <laughs> so yeah so Issa Rae um she's just a, an incredible human being and like I said in the in the uh, she's been very inspired um because she's always wanted like you know the um I guess like the dark couple 
to be like the main love interest and i felt like that was something very beautiful to see um because this reminds me of something that j-lo said was that um in that in the actors roundtable that they have um if you guys haven't seen that i didn't watch the whole thing but there's like really great actresses in that roundtable it's like j-lo um renee zellweger uh scarlett no not scarlett johansson charlize oh and charlize theron were on there too and lupita was in there um aquafina there was some uh, there was some other ones that were in there but basically what j-lo said and this is just to highlight like how important it is um to be able to see yourself on screen so j-lo was a latina who one of her things was she wanted to be the leading lady of a romantic comedy why because she didn't want to always she didn't want to play a role where it was like she was the cleaning lady or she was the nanny you know like she wanted it to be like they fall in love and like this beautiful magical love story and like all this stuff even though she played in the wedding the wedding planner she played an italian you literally could have played a latina girl (laughs) but um but yeah so just to see them in that light is just very beautiful and then going back to Issa Rae her whole thing is this like you know the whole like I want like her thing is like I'm rooting for everybody black so what is she going to do she's going to make movies that allow black creatives to be a part of it um you know she's gonna have the leading roles is gonna be for black like you know for her black actors you know and 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 just everybody in Hollywood and Somebody that w- did a great job in the movie was little. What his name is Little Rel. He didn't. He was. He played in the um in the in the All Star Celebrity Game as well. He did. I I think he was on um Mike Wilbon's team. Um, but okay. So, okay. This is this has nothing to do with the movie. But Stephen A. Smith was the fucking star. <laughs> like there are so many funny videos of him from this past weekend that like y'all need to give Stephen a his flowers a lot more like that man worked so hard and then he he's like the person that we want to see play basketball like (laughs) i don't want to see him coach no more (laughs) like i want to see Stephen a ball up (laughs) get him a jersey like something they need to make him like an honorary um player on 2k That'd be cool, huh? Damn, 2K, y'all call me. I got some ideas. <laughs> I don't know how to play the game. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so just go ahead and check out the photograph. And this this reminds me of Brown Sugar. So Brown Sugar, I've talked about this I think on like episode thirty, because we dedicated kind of like that episode to that movie. And um something that that movie just always reminds me is um like the whole love of hip hop and the metaphor of hip hop and then like you know, the love of her life and how hip hop really is a love of her life. And then she ends up falling for, you know, somebody who's within, in the music industry. And, you know, she believes in his goals and his dreams and she's a writer and like all this stuff. And that was one of the first times that I saw myself in a movie because of what was going on. You know, she's, you know, she's a writer and, um she's like she loves hip-hop and she loves the culture and then like her best friend you know he's he has he works at a com- a record company and then he ends up buy, you know opening up his own and all of this shit is so cool so i remember like being young and watching that movie and just being so inspired by that and so then seeing Issa, um and like how it like the whole concept of the movie is basically along the lines of like my mom didn't know how to love So I'm afraid that I can't do the same. And so she's finding out about her mom's love and how she would like what she did. And like, you just find out so many different things. And so this movie kind of inspired me to be a little bit more open to love and to be a little bit more open to um, love not being perfect. Now, I know sometimes people are like, oh, well, love isn't always going to be perfect. But if that person's not treating you right, I don't care. (laughs) i don't care like i i'm not asking for perfect i'm just asking for respect so yes so that just it just reminded me of that and just like you know seeing yourself in a movie and that's one of the things that i love that these actresses um are doing and have been doing for such a long time is kind of like allowing us to see like man this is very possible to happen or um like i've felt that heartbreak before or i've you know i've fallen in love with my best friend or like you know like there's just so many different things that like you i feel like you can always um 
you can always learn from these movies so yeah so check it out um brown sugar my sister told me to talk about it because it's a movie that inspired me as a younger girl um i remember that was the first time like i yeah because she was a journalist so yeah she was a writer for i think double xl and so that was just pretty dope and then angie martinez is in it she's on it at the end of the the she's on the end of the movie and just seeing angie martinez i was just like oh my god like this is you know she's a radio girl that means that i can one day maybe be in a movie like this is so cool i like ugh, it's crazy i knew when i was like 15 16 that this is what i was going to be doing so i saw my future when i saw that movie and i was just like all i need is like that friend <laughs> that friend <laughs> um but yeah so that was um that was just pretty dope like i said my sister wanted me to share this and i i always feel like it's important to kind of like share with you guys where my inspiration comes from what inspires me what drives me what hypes me up and stuff like that hypes me all the way up one of my favorite things too was that they talked about music on their first date i loved it <laughs> talk to me about music who you like to listen to <laughs> like who do you like to listen to who are you listening to and like all this shit i don't want to spoil the movie but the ending was really cute um so yeah so make sure that you check it out okay so we are shifting gears i wish we had a shifting gears sound effect how do gears shift um okay so as as many of you know, I talk about this on the podcast and I don't, I'm not shy about it. Um, I do have a full-time job. I work a nine to five and I also do this. And then we also have the label, right? So, you know, I have a, I have a job. I have a really good job. Um, and so today I end up going to a meeting about a 401k plan. Now I had a 401k plan at my other job. Uh, this was a job that I was at for five years. So I was at that job for five years. I had a 401k plan. I got it because my mom told me to. A lot of times you just have to listen to your parents. <laughs> you know, when they tell you to do something that's going to benefit your future, you want to kind of listen to them because half of the time, you know, they know kind of know what's going on. So I hadn't gotten the 401k plan. It was never introduced to me until today. So I'm in the meeting and I'm like hearing what this guy is saying. And I'm like, do I really want a 401k plan do i really want to commit to a 401k plan and i feel like this is something that i've never heard any i've never heard no podcast talk about this and it's pretty much are we working towards retirement like is that where we're at like you know what i mean like the guy he's like talking and he's just like yeah because you know, this is supposed to be easy enough that you're just supposed to work and you're not supposed to even remember that you have a retirement plan and like not even touch this money until like I'm 30 right now. This man said that you can't retire until you're like 59 and a half. Hold the fuck up. <laughs> That's a whole nother 30 years. Y'all in there expecting me? No, 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 no. CCC, I got goals, honey. I got goals. And one of the goals includes generational wealth. So you're in a meeting about 401k and they're telling you about retirement plans and you're just like, oh, and then you have to invest this amount and then this amount is going to go, um, they're going to take. So now you're going to be taking money away from my check? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what are you like and it, it, it's just a concept that i feel like i said as a creative it's a concept to me that i feel tied down you know what i mean like me committing to a 401k plan on my job right now means that they're expecting me to stay there a little longer and that's actually what he what what the what the guy was i'm spilling all the tea <laughs> <laughs> what this guy was telling me but it's because i was like I, I wasn't freaking out but i was just thinking about this because yeah a 401k plan sounds great on paper and everything but you're like telling me oh yeah so this is what this is what you get now and then your company is going to be putting money in and this and then you don't you can't see that money until like five years after and it's because they want you to stay there longer and all this stuff and i'm like they want me to stay here longer like, I got about another year in this bitch, <laughs> you know, like in your head, like as a creative. Now, if you see yourself at your job for 30 plus years, I 100 percent recommend getting a retirement plan and the 401k plan. I think that's so important. Like I'm telling you in pa on paper and like when you think about it, it's just like, man, this is a great thing to have because you don't know what's going to happen 
in 30 years or you don't know in like five or 10 years um something unfortunately happens within your family that you may you know a medical condition or something and then you can get money from your 401k there'll be penalties and all of these things but you have that money that you're able to use and put towards whatever it is emergency it is that you have so it's kind of like it's good because it's like oh well i have kind of like an emergency fund you know just in case um it's very good to have like i said um but as someone like myself who i don't see myself working for somebody in 10 years it's kind of hard for me to to be just complacent with like okay i'm gonna get a 401k plan when i know what i want is generational wealth what does generational wealth mean it means that my great grandkids are gonna be good that's what generational wealth means like I'm working towards something bigger than a retirement plan. And it's because what we were, um, as kids, you're taught like that you're supposed to go to school, you graduate, you go to school again, and then you get a full-time job. You work at that job forever. I have my parent, both of my parents have been at their jobs for 20 plus years. So for them, it is very smart that they had a 401k plan. Now times have changed, you know, more and more, it's more possible for you to be your own boss. So what comes with you becoming your own boss? You have a lot more financial freedom. Freedom. So what does that mean? You have more money to invest in your business, which means you make more money in your business. And so when you turn 40 or 45 or even when you're 35, like you have the liberty to be able to retire if you would like to, you know, um, because you have or you're doing something that you love so much that you don't even think about retiring, you know? And then, so you go into your sixties or seventies and you're still doing that thing that you love because it's been number one has been your breadwinner for a, you know, a good amount of time. And then, um, you've created so much generational, like you, uh, um, you've generated so much income that it allows you to be able to live very comfortably without having the 401k plan. Like I said, if you plan on being at somewhere or if you plan on working in corporate America um, or if you work at a place that you know you're going to be working there for a very long time and they have a 401k plan, man, get it. Because they, they almost got my ass today. <laughs> I was like filling it out and then I'm just like, wait a minute. And that's the difference. That's the difference when you're younger and when you're older is that you just listen to what your parents are saying. So, you know, what they say is law. And then it's like, oh, but. Bro, that shit scared me when that man said, <laughs> when that man, when that man said, um, what did he say? He said some shit about retiring. And then I was like, I started doing the math. I was like, I'm 30. That's a long time from now. And you're like, <sighs> bro, I see my, I, I just, I see my life very differently. So. Um, that was something that I wanted to talk about because like it hit me and, um, I know some of you guys are, are working. Some of you are possibly not working or some of you do want generational wealth. So what do we do? Do we get the 401k plan or do, you know, to have it as a backup plan? So one of my things is that I always believe that if you have a backup plan, then your initial plan isn't going to work. I was taught that. Now, should I change that way of thinking? Possibly, because it's very good to have a backup plan. But what do I mean when I say as far as a backup plan? So, obviously, I'm doing this because eventually one day it's going to generate an income that's going to allow me to live comfortably or extraordinarily, which is what I'm striving for. Right? So, I... Holy shit, Hav. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I was getting too deep into it, man. I was giving away too many gems. My mind was just like, Shawty, you need to slow down. <laughs> um, Shit. So, yeah, no, I plan on doing this for a very long time. So, eventually, I want to generate the income that's going to allow me to live extraordinarily doing this. So... <laughs> <laughs> see this is when having the boys on kind of helps because when shit like this happens to me then i'm gonna be like oh back to you spitz um <laughs> but yeah so i just I, I i'm looking towards 
doing that. So I need to, uh, um, huh? Yeah, I'm building towards that. I'm building towards that, and I'm, I'm basically, um, those are the goals that I have in mind. And yeah, so I, I definitely wanted to talk about that because, like I said, you just never know. Oh, backup plans. Okay, that's what I was talking about. I'm so happy I remembered. You see, you see, like a motherfucking G. <laughs> um. Okay, now I'm about to my dumbass about to forget again. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I've always believed that. So my plan A is this. Like, I plan on, you know, get this shit popping, the record label popping. I want all the artists in WTW Dub to fucking explode. Like, they are going to explode. Um, And I want a record company to be one of those companies that, like, is known like a Rockefeller, like a Def Jam, like a, you know, like like that. Like, that's what, that's the goal that we all have in mind, that we want it to be something that is going to create something monumental, correct? And so that's my plan A. I don't got a plan B. It, it's not like, if this don't work. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 it's going to work. And then if it don't work, then we figure it out at that time. That's just me. Because, um, because I remember, okay, so I remember when I was doing Herbalife. I remember when I was doing Herbalife, I didn't have a plan B. Because I believe the same thing that I believe now. Now, I didn't have a plan B um, when it came to, like, what I wanted to do with my life. But the thing is, is that the reason why I didn't have a plan B was because I already had my plan A. I just put it on the back burner and made something else my plan A. So when plan A fell through... This was just so much easier to transition to because this was initially what I wanted to do. So I went back to like my plan A, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's smart to, you know, think of the future and like all of these things. But at the same time, like if you plan on really like going for it, you have to really go for it. And the only thing that I would say is, is, is maybe the, uh, is maybe if something, anything happens and maybe just start a savings you know, have a savings on the side that if you were to, you know, have a low month in your in your personal business or whatever it is that you want to do, you have that money that's going to be able to take care of your rent, um, your bills or whatever. Like have that. Like you, you, if you're working and you have and you're making a good amount of money, um, doing what you love doing, make sure that you save money because you just never know what's going to happen. I was talking on live that I wanted to get more people on here. I'm about to have a motherfucker accountant on here. So they can talk to <laughs> they can talk to us a little bit more about some things because I'm just going about how I feel about things and about um you know how I save and I use this really dope app which is called Digit and Digit is basically an app that saves money for you and it automatically does it for you and you have they give you different um things that you can save it with like you like one of the one of my things is um I have one for my credit card because uh, credit score got to go up so I gotta make sure that you know we putting money towards that so um that and an the other one is like to travel because i want to travel well i have been traveling um i have like fun money you know i usually use that money when i go to disney <laughs> man disney guys i'm really excited because i got a fast pass to meet mickey and that's where we're at with our disney um craziness um but yeah so um th this app is really dope oh I'm going to give y'all a promo code because I get $5 if y'all sign up or whatnot. Um, hold up. Let me get the... I was going to my bank account. Um, ladies, I just want to give y'all a shout out, all of us, because... <sighs> I got waxed today, and that shit hurt like a fucking bitch. And I'm not going to say where. Just know. It hurts. So shout out to all of us. Um, for going through that. <clears throat> okay, so Hop was probably not trying to hear that. <laughs> okay, so share digit. I'm trying to find if there's like a promo code that they give me so that way. Um. Okay. So if you guys want to get this app and you want to get $5 and give me $5, what you can do is get, um, 
is get digit let me know i'll send you the invite and that way you get five dollars i get five dollars and that's all cool um but yeah it's basically um a savings thing so like you have little i don't think you can see it on the on the thing i don't, don't want you to see what i've been saving either <laughs> so i guess you can't see the app but yeah <laughs> there's basically like i'm like moving my phone and shit um <laughs> there's like different little categories there's um okay so i'm gonna show you so it's rainy day i have credit card rainy day because you never know you never know and my rainy day at least got twenty dollars you need to put gas and you got that money right there credit card i have travel and i have staycation one of the things that i'm one of my goals this year is to do a staycation here in miami and one of the nice hotels that they got down in south beach um yeah definitely one of my goals because i think that's really cool so i have that in there so that way it's on my mind i'm not wasting money on dumb shit i'm saving it and that's just you know a really good financial backup plan you know so just in case anything happens a rainy day you want to travel you're not taking money out of your bills to do this this is money that they take out every day and you pick out the amount of money that it is that you want them to save again the app is digit um, if you want to give your girl five dollars, all you gotta do is just ask me. I'll send you the invite, and then there's that. Um, this was not paid by Digit, but if you wanna send a check, <laughs> my email is Claudia dot Renee six zero nine at gmail dot com. I never give that email, but it's real. <laughs> I'm saying if y'all wanna cut a check, okay. So. I was advised by my producer that <laughs> we are getting to the end of the show and we have songs to promote. So we have Big Dreams by CAB, produced by Johnny Hitmaker Hash, who also has a project with Spitz coming soon called Johnny Five. Shout out to CAB, who um, is my other little big brother. Make sure that you guys go support him um, and everything that he's dropping. Um, his Instagram is World Famous Cab um he's most likely everywhere just go and check him out check him out on all the dsps and all that shit and then while you're at it make sure that you hit the subscribe button uh tell a friend tell another friend to listen to the podcast are we done with time i was joking about the time <laughs> but we're good yeah i kind of felt like it was an hour because <laughs> the game shot three dang imagine hitting the game shot three or like mid a uh, mid court Damn, man. I want to be a basketball player just so I could do that. <laughs> Yo, I used to want to be a baller when I was younger. And then I stopped growing and that was not happening. So, for the 108th time in a motherfucking row, it's your girl, Claudia Renee, on your airwaves. And we are out of here. <laughs>